to beef up your monster design skills, head over to proco.com slash monster lab to get the premium course. It has a lot more lessons, demos, assignments, and critiques to help you become a better concept designer. Okay, now let's jump in. Hey guys, we're back in the lab and it's time to go over some feedback on your character lineups. And first up is the submission from James Connolly. Oh, this is nice. Whoa, this is sick. These are cool, James. I haven't seen this, dude. James posted and said, trying to team these up got awkward. Sorry about that. Yeah, I can see that. This is why I keep the lineups flatter. It's easier to show off the silhouettes. When you start doing that three quarter, that top down view like this, you're getting more foreshortening. Things are going to start to stack up and get obscured. When you flatten them, it's more like paper dolls and the silhouettes can pop apart from each other. This could still work though. And this is pretty cool. It's pretty freaking sick. I think it's just going to be about like um, values, introducing a bit of atmospheric perspective. You know, if you're going to paint it up, it's your lighting, like popping out some rim lights and color. These are freaking cool, dude. These are my favorites so far. I like the way you've approached this. This is more like the character class archetypes that I've laid out so far in the feedback today and in the past are almost like they're pretty much focused on good guys, the protagonists, the heroes. I haven't really talked about that same equivalent, but for bad guys, this is more like what you get in something like a Left 4 Dead. That's what I'm seeing here. We've got a caster. This is like the evil wizard caster. This would be like basic grunt or zombie. This is like the most low level enemy you're going to fight. It's just a base pumpkin zombie. This would be the equivalent of like the hound, kind of like a low level thrill. Get your blood curdling, something you do, get a really cool house, some really, you know, fun audio tell that it's coming your way. Okay, you've got the multiple heads and arms. This is really cool, dude. I really like your draftsmanship and stuff. These are freaking cool. But what I'm getting from him is more, you know, you got that crazy eye thing going on and the big teeth, the multiple arms, and you got a weapon. So I'm kind of getting like a berserker feel here. Like this is like another tier up in terms of fighter. Like this character would drop in sort of like the brute in um the last of us you know the cordyceps brute character that's like bigger and causes more damage that you can drop into a bunch of heroes and it's just flailing around with these multiple arms with these weapons i think your weapon choice is a bit like boring i guess i guess it's supposed to be a knife and more it just looks like a cross guard sword if you're gonna do buck knife you know buck knife or bowie knife you know that kind of thing i just think there's like a particular shape you gotta hit it feels more like Wood Sword from Legend of Zelda. That's like the vibe I'm reading, which makes it feel kind of sillier or childish, you know, like to have a wooden sword. I don't think that's what you're really going for here, but that's the visual. It's not quite working. I can't exactly tell what's going on here because in terms of setting, because we've got a guy, this zombie guy, he looks like he looks like a zombie, like more regular person, regular clothes. This guy does not read as a, like fantasy genre per se. Or like like high fantasy or medieval, anything like that. Where this guy does, where he seems like he's on an axe, a big battle axe. So I guess that, that would be like a point of feedback right from the get-go is to clarify your general theming, the background for the, this whole group of characters, this world. It's modern day, contemporary, like Last of Us or something. So we're going to see real world weapons like Bowie knives and baseball bats and shovels and axes and whatever, mauls, sledgehammers, uh, survival utility weapons. Or is this fantasy genre in which we get cool battle axes and maces and warhammers, etc.? Because if that were the case for a fantasy world, then we should get some cool, we can get some cool like spiked maces and you know, maybe his other hand, like a more of a Viking long axe kind of thing. It's like a whirling dervish of weapons, like multiple arms, each one holding a different melee weapon. Of course, they demand skill, but a weapon that's typically associated with like hack and slash, not a rapier, you know, not a cutlass, not a skill weapon, more of a power weapon, mace, axe, club, that kind of deal. Hammer, that's what I do. And maybe a scythe. So anyway, so this character, I would treat it like a sort of like a berserker, which would be a high level, like a high level melee enemy to deal with. Something that would take the efforts of the whole crew to focus on, or it could easily rip them apart. And then tank back here. And this counts as tank. But this is tank like left for dead tank. So you hear this guy, you know, rumbling, crossing the ground, shaking the earth, roaring in the distance. Different kind of threat, much bigger threat. The caster is definitely the leader or at least the smart, the smart one. 
Okay. So in general, I love these. They're really fun. And I think, you know, separating them in the group is just going to be about atmospheric perspective. We're just going to push them back. There's not enough atmosphere or space between these characters for atmospheric perspective to really come into play, but we can kind of fake it. And you could create like a gradient, like a soft, soften this brush. And we could, you know, erase back into the focal area a bit and bring back some of the contrast there. And you just continue to do the same thing as you, you know, come forward in space. The characters get, you know, their higher contrast, maybe thicker holding lines. You're kind of doing it on your caster already. It's thicker lines that differentiate him from the other characters. For now, your berserker, placement of your berserker, I don't read any lower body. And it also looks like the way the hips line up with your hound. It's like not quite right. You know what I'm saying? Like it looks like the hips feel too close behind this guy's butt. It feels a little weird. So you got to separate them. The hound is really cool. I like that character a lot. I like the pose a lot. Maybe you could flip it directionally so he's facing out this way. Right now, most of your all your characters are looking this way except the wizard, which is looking directly on. A lot of times what I'm trying to do in a lineup is, you know, imagine you're with a crew of your buddies, right? You're going to get in a fight or something. You know, a guy on the left is going to face, that's his job is like cover the left. The guy on the right, his job is to cover the right. The guy up front's going to cover the front. And so you'll, you'll see in my lineups, you usually see that kind of thing where the characters on the outer margins their job is to watch the flanks. And they're usually a character that can deal with the flanks. One thing I want to mention is these do feel a bit safe. They just feel like fun studies of zombies. Like your grunt, just he's cool, but it's a bit safe. I don't hate it though. I like it. But I'm just, I guess what I'm saying is I feel like you could push these a lot. The caster, the caster is pretty cool. The one that seems the most obvious, and I don't, I don't know why I have a desire to do this, but with your tank, to do something silly. Your tank kind of looks like my tank, like just big pumpkin patch guy, which is cool. But what if, what if you did something silly, like, I don't know, little wings or something and like chunky wings, like wings that won't, that don't really work. Something fun about that. That's silly. I guess that's what I'm looking for is right now. They're all pretty badass. They don't necessarily have a lot of charisma. Your caster has some charisma. This circle eye thing is neat. I'm not sure about though. Like instead you could just make the eyes here. You do the headless horseman thing and you bring the identity down there. But you just have to make sure that this face is cool here on this on this guy and maybe you bring in like a bit of that crazy eye you need some charisma you need some personality maybe a crazy tongue could do it there clarifying your like genre or setting i could see that being really useful here just sort of bringing them into the same world so it's really clear we're in the past we're in a you know alternate sort of fantasy universe we're in contemporary times Trying to push a bit more charisma into the like higher level and baddies, higher level bad guys, like the character, the caster, the tank, and the berserker. Or I think the hound and the grunt are fine as is, but you just can't have like each of the special infected. There was something like a special hook about them as you moved up and left for dead. That's what you need here. Oh, one last bit. I guess I was going to show you. If you decide to, I don't really do much digital painting. It's just not. I don't really enjoy doing that. But. You look like a guy that probably would want to paint this stuff. So if you were going to, these are sick drawings, dude. These are fun. <laughs> I'm really enjoying just like looking at these. Gotta, you should hit hit me up on Instagram, dude. I want to see more of your work. You're obviously a really good artist. It's pretty cool. Fun to see. So what I'm doing, I'm just using, you know, use that light to pop out to, to some degree to sort of like trace the character, you know, pop them out. You know, stuff like that can go a long way. And later on, you can use multiple room lights. We could have one dominant one and then one secondary one. I'll do that a lot if I'm like actually trying to paint. Where like, let's say, for example, right now I'm just using the white on grayscale because it pops, looks real nice. And you can do little tricks like add the glow. He's like outer glow. And uh, let's see here. Glow can get out of hand real quick. I'm guilty of it. I know it's pretty subtle right now, but it's kind of nice. I'll use... This kind of look on a grayscale image, but then if you're going to go to paint, you want to use color, we could do this. So let's turn off this outer glow. Let's just say, for example, okay, I'm going to use a select color. I'm going to go into my neutrals and I'm going to actually, I'm going to just make them more orange. All the guys more orange. I'll go to my blacks and bring them into purple land. So you do that. Then I could just like grab all this background information. And I'm just going to pull, kind of separate that really quick with a quick selection. Okay. So then what we could do is we could take this rim light and we could bring color to it, you know. We could make it really in, a really intense color. 
really warm, draw a lot of attention to itself, something like that. And then what you could do on the other side to help like separate the other side to describe it, basically choose like a complement, like a contrasting color. So I have like a purple there. Let's go across the color wheel to like a, let's go to a good purpley blue. And we're going to say this one is approaching from, um, it's not exactly realistic because, you know, these bodies would be like blocking each other. And so you wouldn't get so much of this color showing through. But the idea is for just to help separate things, create some breakup. Basically what I'm saying here is purpley color is coming from down here, coming from below and from off camera. Something like that. Orange color coming from above off camera. So, and then we choose which one's dominant. Want our orange to be the primary player. So basically I'll just like real, really quick. I'll just like reduce. Let's take all the purple. Let's darken it. Let's reduce the saturation. So its presence is still felt but it's not the most important. It's not like the uh, primary light source. If both are equally intense, you could do that, but I think it could be confusing for the eye. Where the idea here is to help reinforce the idea of form and to use that color to help to differentiate these overlapping parts of our characters, help create some sense of separation. Yeah, so our orange will be primary and our purple will be our secondary. And actually our purple would be more like this. Just that idea of the Berserker with lots of weapons erupting out of him is pretty cool. I like that a bunch. I think that's worth looking into in your next try. I love this. This is refreshing to approach it from the villain point of view, which honest, it makes a lot of sense because they're like pumpkin guys. Like they look like bad guys. Even the guys I did look like bad guys. They look like guys you'd fight in a, you know, you'd come across in some, in some video game. These are sick. I love them. I got to move on, but these are so much fun. You should join the Discord. I've got a VizDev Discord. It's a lot like classes I used to run on campus when I was teaching at art schools. We work on a different project every single month. Or actually, the last couple months, we committed to one larger project, but generally, we take on a month-long project. We did a Alien Jungle Book one month. We did Moby Dick in Hell. We do something for Monstober, The Giving Beast at Thanksgiving. Thank you all who submitted your work. Really nice job. A lot of cool stuff to look at. And I'm excited to see where they go in the next assignment stage. Okay, take care. See you guys next time. Bye-bye. And be sure to check out the full course at proco.com slash monsterlab.